Well, it's the one-year mark for the Biden regime, and with a 33 percent approval in the latest poll, it's clear that he basically gets no marks from the American people for his devastatingly bad performance. How does it make those Trump-hating Democrats and their media servants feel to learn that Biden is below where Trump was after his first year? That's because Biden is the worst president in American history. He said it shut down the pandemic, make the economy work for everyone, bring competence to government, restore American leadership in the world. Instead, with the pandemic raging, inflation soaring, supply chain crisis, border crisis, of course, the Afghanistan crisis, America's feeble, failing president is a laughing stock around the world. As Maureen Dowd wrote in the New York Times today, people wanted competence and stability, and instead we get incompetence and instability. Biden didn't do anything he promised. His legislative agenda lies in tatters. His deal-making prowess we were all told about revealed as a complete joke. Three times Biden was wheeled out to try and persuade his own party in Congress to back him, and three times they told him to drop dead. But even among all these disasters, there is one that stands out, one so egregiously, so completely contradictory to what we were promised that it's in a league of shame all its own. The one thing Biden actually had a mandate for was to bring the country together. He said so himself in his inaugural address a year ago. Stop the shouting and lower the temperature. Politics doesn't have to be a raging fire. We must end this uncivil war. And this week, almost a year on from those promises of unity, we saw Biden throw them on a bonfire of his own making, the president of the United States reduced to the abject spectacle of a tawdry race hustler, riling up his base to cover up his failure, deliberately dividing the country for his own partisan ends. Biden went to Georgia to push voting rights, but his reckless rant instead pushed Biden into the rotten, stinking swamp of dishonest, divisive demagoguery. Biden's rant in Atlanta must surely go down as one of the most disgraceful speeches any president has made. The man who promised to unite the country now labeling anyone who disagrees with him a domestic enemy. I will defend the right to vote, our democracy against all enemies, foreign and, yes, domestic. And just in case that wasn't clear enough, he helpfully explained who you'd be with if you're his domestic enemy. You want to be the side, the side of Dr. King or George Wallace? Do you want to be the side of John Lewis or Bull Connor? Do you want to be the side of Abraham Lincoln or Jefferson Davis? Apparently, that little piece of juvenile demagoguery was actually written by this man, John Meacham, who pops up on MSNBC all the time claiming to be a historian. A historian! Funny how these autocratic leaders who treat their opponents as enemies of the state always end up with regime propagandists who dress up their fascism as principle. John Meacham, the author of The Rant in Atlanta, yeah, he's a historian, just like Lenny Riefenstahl is a documentary filmmaker. Biden, the Democrats, and their propagandists like Meacham are using the tactic of the authoritarian tyrant through the ages, manufacture a crisis in order to justify a crackdown. They're trying to convince people, especially black people, that their voting rights are being taken away by organized, targeted voter suppression by Republicans. They think that if they say it enough, people will believe it. But every single specific allegation turns out to be a Democrat lie. There's the lie about getting rid of election officials. In Georgia, the restrictive voting law enacted in March gives unchecked power to the state election board to remove local election officials. We heard about these partisan takeovers of elections at our field hearing in Atlanta from one election official who had been ousted uh, by the state legislature after over a decade of service. According to Biden's rant in Atlanta, this is election subversion. But there's an almost identical provision in the Democrat bill Biden wants to push through Congress. The Georgia law says states can suspend local election officials for, quote, nonfeasance, malfeasance, or gross negligence. Biden's own bill says states can suspend local election officials for, quote, gross negligence, neglect of duty, or malfeasance in office. There's the lie that voter ID is racist voter suppression. 
But the mayor of Washington, D.C., who painted Black Lives Matter on the street outside the White House, has just introduced voter ID for leaving your house. Why was the decision made not to require a valid photo ID when someone, let's say, presents their COVID vaccine card? To I think we do expect to require that. And sure enough, she did. Here's her little tweet starting Saturday. You will need photo ID before heading out. If we apply the Democrats' voting rights argument, that's worse than voter suppression. That's extrajudicial house arrest for black people. Time to send the Department of Justice Civil Rights Division in to arrest Muriel Bowser. There's the lie about drop boxes. Racist Georgia lawmakers taking them off the streets when they were actually putting them on the streets. In 2019, drop boxes were completely illegal in Georgia. Now they're enshrined in law. There's the lie about mail-in voting. Thanks to the new Republican law, anyone in Georgia can request a mail-in ballot, whereas in Biden's Delaware, you need to give a reason. In Chuck Schumer's New York, you need to sign an attestation that you're out of town, ill, caring for someone who's ill, in a veterans facility or in jail. It is a felony to make a false statement in an application for an absentee ballot, the instructions warn. Yet Schumer calls the Georgia law dastardly. He points to the consolidation of early voting places in one rural county as being part of some January the 6th style plot to stop black people voting. But the black woman in charge of voting in that county says they've been planning the change for years. It's driven by declining numbers of voters. In any case, quote, we have advanced voting, we have absentee ballots, and we will also have transportation. Oh, and by the way, it's a 68% Republican county. On and on it goes, lie after lie after lie, whether it's drop boxes or mail-in voting or early voting or voter ID, election rules which are less restrictive than in many Democrat-run states described by Democrats as the new Jim Crow. Do they ever stop to think about what they're actually saying, what their words even mean? Under Jim Crow, schools, restaurants, buses were segregated. It was evil, shameful, disgusting. And now for Biden and the Democrats to use the specter of Jim Crow to advance their own partisan power grab, well, yeah, that's evil and that's shameful and that is disgusting. Biden, Pelosi, Harris, all of them, they are reckless racial arsonists, as usual guilty of the exact thing they accuse others of. And then when you ask yourself why, it gets even worse. What's the reason Biden went to Atlanta to deliver this ill-judged, appalling rant. Well, would you believe it? Chuck Todd gave us the answer just this morning. You know, I'm not, I was told by somebody in the White House that, look, they're like, uh, the activists are angry. He had to do this. Like, that was the argument. If he didn't do this, they weren't going to have people to lick envelopes in, in Senate races and House races. Licking envelopes. Because they're worried about not having enough people to lick envelopes for their election campaigns, they rub salt in America's most painful wounds. That's what this whole thing is about, and it shows what Democrats are all about. For them, it is always about politics, not policy, point scoring, not principle, pandering to their base instead of leading the country. And the lies aren't just about voting specifics. The whole story they're telling is a lie. They say Republicans are trying to suppress the vote because they fear demographic change. But in the 2020 presidential election, the black Republican vote went up. The Latino Republican vote went up a lot, while the Latino vote for Democrats went down a lot. Thanks to Trump's conservative populism, the Republican Party is becoming a multiracial, working-class coalition, while the Democrats become the party of the rich, white, and woke. This is the actual factual demographic reality. The more that non-white citizens vote, the better it is for Republicans and the worse it is for Democrats. The Democrats say they're trying to save democracy. They're the ones undermining it. Look what's in their voting legislation. Nationalizing elections, unconstitutional. Undermining voter roll accuracy, unacceptable. Abolishing voter ID laws, unconscionable and the whole stinking pile of anti-democratic, corrupt garbage crowned by their attempt to expand the banana republic atrocity of ballot harvesting. And then... The goal of the former president and his allies is to disenfranchise anyone who votes against them. They'll just decide what they want and then do it. 
That's the kind of power you see in totalitarian states, not in democracies. Biden rants about authoritarianism. Excuse me, but who is sending in the FBI to intimidate parents who disagree with Democrat schools policy? Whose regime is it in an absolutely chilling new development that just announced this? Domestic violent extremists are often motivated by a mix of ideologies and personal grievances. We've seen a growing threat from those who are motivated by racial animus, as well as those who ascribe to extremist, anti-government, and anti-authority ideologies. I've decided to establish a domestic terrorism unit to augment our existing approach. We have run out of words to express how dangerous and frightening this all is. If you're anti-authority, you're a domestic terrorist. If you disagree with Biden, you're a domestic enemy. And if you speak out against this, if you try to protect free speech and democracy, you're the authoritarian. As Biden approaches his first baleful anniversary in office, it's hard to overstate what a disaster this man is. The economy, the pandemic, the border, foreign policy, everything engulfed in chaos and failure. Biden should have been impeached over Afghanistan. He should be removed with the 25th Amendment over his obvious senility. But after the rant in Atlanta, we can say for sure that if he had any decency, any dignity, he would resign in shame over the hate and division he's bringing to this country. Follow us at Steve Hilton X. And at hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.